everyone, happy Friday. It's Friday Sews, and today I'm gonna to give you a tour of my sewing room, even that messy closet that I showed you in a prior video. And if you wanna see what my sewing room looked like before, I'll put a link in my description box so you can click on that and see what it looked like before. But now let's get started and I'll show you what I've done. Welcome to my sewing room, come on in. Okay, we're in my sewing room. I'm gonna show you a quick 360 of my sewing space. There's my cutting table. And then I'll show you some more detail. It's gonna do a quick turn around. You all recognize that, that's where I mostly film my background. And that's the door you come in and we'll start here and I'll show you my sewing machine okay this is where I sew I have my sewing machine covered with this um, reversible cover that I made when I went to American Sewing Guild one of the classes was to make a sewing machine cover and it's reversible I kind of wish it was pink now because my sewing room used to be blue now it's pink I may have to make another one of these one day but this is where I sew. I have a Husqvarna Viking Sapphire 965Q. And I have it sitting on an old dresser that belonged to my daughter when she was a little girl. And here's where I keep all my needles from my sew machine. And all my supplies. And these are my hemostats. I love these. These are so good for pulling little things out. And the one thing I really use this for is to put batting inside of my rag dolls into the little arms and legs. It's so hard to get into that tiny space, but this, I can pinch off some batting, fiber fill, and push it into the, um, the little arms and legs. So this comes in very handy for stuffing batting and um, fiber fill into small spaces. And over here in this drawer, I keep my bobbins check and I keep when I break a needle I put it in here and when I get this full then I throw it away so nobody doesn't get poked with a needle in the garbage and here is my hot light seam ripper it's hard to do this with one hand but it has a light on it and a magnifying glass so that you can you can move it adjust it up and down like this closer or further away so that you can get a really close up view of what you're seam ripping. This really comes in handy with those, especially with black fabrics, so hard to rip your seams with darker fabrics. So I love this. And I made a little holder out of a, a um, pot holder. Let me turn the light out. And, it, and I keep it right in here to protect the glass. And here's my turning tools, my quilting pins. This is one of my most favorite tools. This is a threader. Okay, I'll show you quickly how this works. I just sewed up a little casing on a piece of scrap fabric here. And you just take this, this tool and you put your elastic through here or your ribbon or your drawstring, whatever you need to use. And you just put it in the casing. just that quickly. Pull it through. Super easy. You have this and this. And you can drawstring it. Or put your elastic in. It's so easy and fast, especially trying to put a drawstring through a hoodie. This tool you will love. And I'll put a link in my description box below if you need one of these. Where I catch all my, my threads, look at all this. When I snip off threads, I put them in here. Can you see that close up? Mm -hmm. And I pop them in there as I clip them off here. And this is what I use when I do my close up filming of sewing. My son got me this on Amazon. I'll try to link it below if I can find it. 
and I, I pop my phone right in here and I can move it around and get, get close up view of um, sewing on the sewing machine so I can make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. And then when I'm sewing, without, without videotaping, I move it out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. And this I got at a yard sale. I love this little metal metal um, thread wrap. It's so cute. I love the little hearts in it that is metal. It's so pretty. And these are some clackers that I made. I have a tutorial on my channel if you want to learn how to make these. And I have this little rolling cart. And my last sewing machine that died was also a Goose Barn Viking. So I have the extra feet and things here to, that I can also use on this sewing machine. So I just keep it near, next to me. And I have this little rolling cart with all my little sewing accessories. I, I use these glass um, coasters. I put my son, my baby boy Robbie in that. And I use this as my pattern weights. These are my marking tools. I love using chalk because you can use all different colors for whatever fabric you're using. And I use this to sharpen my chalk into a fine, um, into a fine point so I can get a better point on those. See, like that sharpens them to a nice point. And then I can close, close this to keep it from leaking out. And here I have, these come in so handy when you're cutting fabric and it makes a mess all over your cutting table, you can just roll it right up. And here's my cutting table. It's one that you can roll around and both sides fold down, so it's really small, but I never fold it down. I keep it up all the time because I use it all the time. And it has storage here. I keep all my, my rulers for cutting and some other supplies down there, my toolbox and another little ironing surface. And I have this little caddy here to hold some supplies. And I love that this has the um, outlets right up here at table height. So I can plug up my glue guns and my Cricut and easy access and I don't have to bend over. And I love this light that's, that I can use for close up work for getting some more detail work here on my table and it's um, I can move it wherever I, I need it. And this light used to be like a bronzy gold and I painted it pink to match my sewing room. Painted the the wire and the chain and everything. It's so pretty, I love it. And even that little piece. And over here, this used to be a candle holder. Like remember back in the day, you would put a little can glass candle to hold a candle, a, a glass candle holder here and put a little candle in it. But I saw this at a yard sale and I thought this would be really cool to hang all my tape measures. So that's what I'm using it for. And I love it, of course, pink rose, I love it. And that's a painting my daughter did. I love that. And over here on the on the front of this door to my closet is a clear shoe caddy. And I like that it's clear so I can see everything that's in it. It's so cool. I like that. And over here is my serger. My serger is a Who's Farna Viking Husky Lock 936. And I love it. It works great. And here's my ironing station. I have this old fashioned metal chair to keep my iron on. And I have my ironing board set up. This ironing board's so old. I want to get a new one. I can't wait to get a new one that's more. Um, more like a rectangle shape. They have those things that fit on top of it and make it big so you can iron bigger things. Because eventually I need to do something with the curtains. That's the only thing I wasn't happy about here. I love my curtains, but they're too small for this window because my last house, they fit perfect. But this house, I really need at least two more panels. And of course they don't make this shabby chic um, vintage curtain anymore. And on Etsy, they're like $100 for one. So I'm, if I can't find two more panels of this at a cheaper price, then I'm gonna have to maybe put, maybe sew some um, different curtains, but I haven't been able to find fabric I like to make curtains, or maybe put some solid pink in there in the middle and put the, these on the outside. 
I don't know. If you guys have some ideas, comment below. Because I just love these curtains. They make me so happy. But I need two more panels to make it look right. And this is my storage. My my bookshelves that I keep all my, my fabric that I put on um, Dollar Tree plates. I use these Dollar Tree plates and wrap my fabric on them. I have a video on my channel to show you how I, how I wrap them in a unique way. And you guys saw my little bunnies I make out of socks. I have a video on that on my channel. And that's a little um, crazy quilt pillow I made. And you guys saw my little pin cushion I made out of a tuna can. And this is a little cross I crocheted years ago, like a little crochet bookmark. And my daughter gave me this. We, me and her went to see Taylor Swift at a concert and she did a song to her mom called The Best Day Ever With You. And my daughter found this and after we had spent a really fun day together, she gave me this canvas that says Best Day Ever With You, Love Isa. And I just love that. It makes me happy every time I see it. And here I have my my embroidery threads, even though I don't have an embroidery machine anymore because that one broke, but I still use the thread for other other projects. And down here I have buttons, buttons, and more buttons. <laughs> and these are all my children's patterns. You saw in a recent haul, I just had those and there's a bunch more patterns in here my friend Carly gave me, the little baby patterns. And some more projects I've made. And I have a small stash of patterns. These are these are all my patterns here. You guys have seen a lot of these. And more buttons. My fabric. You saw that. And this is where I keep my thread, my sewing thread. And these are my rag dolls that I made and a little bunny I made. And this is a little pin cushion I made out of a little frame. This is a frame I got from Dollar Tree and I took off the back and I put um, fabric and, and batting inside and put the cover back on. And it's a cute little pin cushion that stands up. And here's more fabric. And I also love to paint. I like to watercolor paint. So there's some of my watercolor supplies. And I painted that poppy in the back there. And more watercolor and more crafting supplies and drawing supplies. And over here is my painting corner. I have all my acrylic paints and these two holders, which I love. And here is a little rack to hold all my aprons. And here's an apron that I made out of some white fabric and I used my Cricut to put these words, let your creativity bloom with a, with a pretty flower. And then I have three pockets down here that I made. And this is another one I made years ago and it's got lots of paint on it. And this is one that a friend of mine gave me. And this is like a little mini quilt I made. It was supposed to be a bookmark, but it ended up being so big that it was like a little mini quilt. I did this in memory of my mom when she passed away. And I took a picture. This is when someone you love becomes a memory, the memory becomes a treasure. And that's my mom. She is so pretty. That's me and her. And that's me and my mom and my dad when I was little. And that's mom and me. And I did all these stitches with my sewing machine. That was therapeutic and to do. And over here is another clear shoe caddy that holds more of my painting supplies.
And now I will show you that closet. That was a disaster the last time I showed you. Okay, when we open the door on the inside of the closet, I have another shoe caddy that holds all my cutting tools, all my scissors, my rotary cutters. And all kinds of different little things I have going on. And then when you walk in, I have this caddy that holds all my scrap fabric. These are all my pinks. And I have them mostly all, except for this, I have them all in little Ziploc bags so that it's easy to sort through and find what I want. I like, I like sewing with scraps. So those are all my pinks and oranges in there. And here are my blues and greens. Again, all in Ziploc bags. And here's all my, my whites and beiges. And I try to mark when I can what, what kind of fabric it is so it's easier to find. And here's my reds. And down here is blacks and grays and yellows. And then up above here, I have bins of different craft supplies. I collect pretty pillowcases and I have my ribbons and my laces and my glue gun. And I like to label everything so it's easy to find. I have my canvases up there and extra fabric that's too big to put on my shelf. And I love those caboodles from Dollar Tree. They're so pretty, so I stocked up on those. And I have my antique laces. And I like to keep all my zippers separated by size and my Velcro and elastic. So it's all easy to find when I'm in the middle of doing a project. And then on this side of the closet, I have wrapping paper and pillow forms. And this was a bin I got. These are all my, my jean squares. I was going to make like a jean quilt one day and I haven't done it. And down here is a bunch of fabric squares I got at a thrift store. There's a ton of them in there. And here's all the different little squares of fabric I got from a thrift store. Still don't know what I'm gonna do with that. And then I have this bin of yarn. And this was my bow fabric that I have left over from making my granddaughter's bows. And this is where I have my Cricut mat hanging on the wall. And these are my supplies for making my little necklaces. Those little necklace making supplies in here. And here are some necklaces I made using those supplies. Here's a cute little dandelion. This is my grandson. And this one. These are all my snaps and tools to make snaps. And this is my vinyl. All my iron-on vinyl is up here in this drawer. And all my regular vinyl is down in this drawer. And these are some more crafting supplies, little buttons and doodads. And I love these little diamond-wrapped adhesive wraps from Dollar Tree. They're so pretty. Love that color. And this is a little bin I got from Dollar Tree. And I put a Ziploc bag and I put a paper plate in there to hold, to give it some, some strength. And that way I can just write little and put, um, and put a label of what's in here. These are just scrap ribbons and it helps hold it up so then I can see what's in the next one. Here is clear rubber bands. My clear rubber bands are in here. 
And this is scrap lace. It's like a little filing system and some books that I have. And these are some clothes that don't fit me anymore and also some clothes that I want to turn into different items. Like I, I think I showed this in a video. I want to make a backpack purse out of this. That would be so cool. So I got it. I got so many projects I need to get to. And some little onesies I have here to, to use for projects. And over here, I have more buttons and I have my watercolor card kit where I turn my watercolor paintings into cards. I have all my supplies in there. And here's some of my um, Big Shot supplies from my Big Shot. It's out on in another room in storage. And here is where I keep my Cricut on this shelf. And I have a little pink step stool so I can get up to the stuff that's higher up for me because I'm short. <laughs> and down here I have the towels that I need to sew. And these are towels that are finished. These are my finished towels. Well, almost finished. They're finished sewing. I still have to sew a button on right here. And I have a video on my channel. And I'll try to link some of these videos I'm talking about in the description box if you want to see how I made these. And the buttons around the handle of your oven door. And more supplies down there. So I can actually get in here and walk around. So I was so happy to get all this done and organized. And the reason I like everything so visual, I don't know if you guys have seen that video on um, YouTube called Clutterbug. And she has different organizing ideas. And I'm a bee. I like to see everything. I like it very organized and I like to see everything. But if you take her test, you can figure out what kind of organizer you are because there's different kinds. Some people like things hidden in bins and some people like everything hidden. They don't want to see anything or they want it all behind doors. So it's a really cool test you can take to see what style you are. I'll put her link in my description box too so you guys can figure out what kind of organizer you are. Learning that I was a bee really saved me it made such a difference in my sewing room because I used to have um, a sewing room in our condo. And back then I had everything in a closet in drawers, even all my fabric, there was nothing out like this. Everything was in, in drawers behind closed doors in a closet. And when I had my, my sewing room organized like that where everything was hidden behind doors and in drawers and I couldn't see any of it, I couldn't see any of the stuff, all the paints were in drawers, everything. And then I wondered, why am I not happy? Why am I not being creative? And then when I saw um, her Cass's video of the clutter bug and she showed the different styles of a bee and a butterfly and a cricket and a ladybug. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm a bee. That's why I'm not being creative in this space because I am visual. I need to see my fabric. I need to see the colors. I need to see the thread. I need to see all my stuff. I like it organized in detail but I have to see it. And everybody's different. That's why you have to find out what is your style. So I hope you check that out because it really helped me so much. And I am so much happier having the bookshelves and seeing all my stuff. So just wanted to pass that tip along to you guys. If you wanna see more of my Friday Sews videos, click right here. Thank you for joining me today. Have a so blessed day. Bye for now.